Like I said, they can be super predictable. That was my first cast in this spot. I caught them here last year at the same time. I knew they were gonna be here. And my guess is there's probably a lot more than, than that one, so. You know, summertime, uh, little small rivers can be absolutely fantastic fishing. And uh, the fish can be really predictable. And uh, I like to fish them out of a canoe, sometimes on foot. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do both right now. I'm going to show you how to do both right now. I'm going to show you how to do both right now. Alright, i got a couple hours to fish here. And I just have the canoe. I'm going to dump it in the river. we got some storms coming, so I'm pretty sure the fish should be biting here. I just have two hours to fish. I'm just going to fish a one little stretch of river by the bridge. But uh, the canoe gives you a little more access than you can get on foot. So uh, we're just about here. I'm going to dump the canoe in and away we go. One of the hazards of uh, canoe ownership is mice. They love going up in the ends of them. So I got to dump him out. What I'm doing now is I've just repositioned myself to be underneath the bridge. So the fish aren't used to seeing baits presented vertically almost right on top of them under this bridge. And oftentimes you can get them to bite when you otherwise couldn't from shore. So, and then there's a bite right there. Fish on. Exactly what I was talking about right here. I didn't bring a net. Oh, well, that was a while. I, I think he was about 14 inches, probably a hair too short. So you get the picture. Um, that fish was pretty much directly under my canoe when it bit, and that is exactly what I'm talking about. They aren't used to seeing a bait slowly presented that way right in front of them. It's usually drifting past or stuck to the bottom, one of the two. So I'm going to see if we can get another bite here. There's a bite. Ooh, nice fish. This one's definitely bigger than the last one. Right under my canoe again. Right under it. Oh, big smallie. It might be a minute here. He's gonna have some fight in them. These river fish just fight so unbelievably hard compared to lake smallies. When you're gonna land them without a net under a bridge, you gotta reel down pretty tight on them. And then you gotta choke up on the rod to land them. Otherwise, you're not gonna have enough rod length. To get the fish up. There. Look at that. That is awesome. So that fish bit literally right under my canoe. Uh, anchored up under this bridge and um, he just smoked that crawler. And he, right after I lost a walleye, the next cast basically hooked this fish. So there's probably more. And uh, we're just going to keep fishing this until we run out of fish, but this is why I love river fishing right here. You just never know what's going to hit. Oh, there's a bite. Fish on right under me again. Literally right under my canoe. Right there. What do we have this time? Oh, another big smolly. This one's even bigger than the last one. Oh, that's a nice one. Alright, he's tearing out now. Oh. Oh, what a pretty fish. What a pretty fish. Look at that. 
that is what I'm talking about. Public bridge, I mean, this bridge gets fished hard, but you get a little different angle on those fish, and uh, you can just fool them into biting. So let that guy go. But man, those river smallies are fun. Nothing like it. There's a bite. Got him. Oh yeah. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I think it's the old red horse. These are cool fish. These are cool fish. And they fight. Look at that. I mean, they pull drag. They fight just as hard as a smallmouth. Maybe not quite as long, but they're built for river life, and they they can they can really go. Look at that, though. Such a cool fish. I I don't know. I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to fish, but I don't really care what kind of fish they are. I just love catching fish, and these are super cool. Um, just the, the color patterns on them, the big fins, uh, the orange, the big old schnoz on them. All right, it's getting time for me to go here shortly. Uh, I'm just going to fish a couple holes on the way back up. And uh, there's one. Hopefully I can pull a couple more fish out, as I was just about to say. A little smally. Not a giant, but I can see the big cumulus clouds rolling in, and I just heard the first uh, first little roll of thunder. And I've got somewhere I got a bee too, so all I had was two hours and uh, caught a bunch of fish. Maybe we'll pull one or two more out here on the way up, but uh, that's the beauty of river fishing is you don't have to put a lot of time in to have a good time, so. Another one. This is a walleye. It's a pretty nice one. <laughs> I'm going to have to move down the bank to land this one. I'm on kind of a steep bank, so I'll be right back. <clears throat> now that's what I'm talking about right there. Like I said, small rivers in the summertime can be absolutely fantastic, especially if you don't have a whole lot of time to fish. If you just got a couple hours, you can pull over on the side of the road and cast a few casts in a hole and move on. So I'm just letting that crawler just roll along the bottom until I feel a fish pick it up like I just did. And I'm just coming tight on the fish like that. No need for a big giant hook set. With that light wire hook, just tighten up on them. This is a nice fish. Not sure what it is yet, but good size. Looks like a pike. You never know what you're going to get in these small rivers. It's one of the reasons I love fishing these in the summertime. Pike, smallmouth, suckers, walleyes. You name it, can be in here. I'm going to have to go land this guy. So how cool is that? Uh, pretty nice pike. I mean, that's an eater pike. I could definitely fillet that fish. Um, and he didn't eat that jig, but he ate my crawler. So, like I said, switch it up. If they're not aggressive enough to eat that, that aggressive jigging presentation, they'll certainly pick up a crawler. So I got a few more casts to make here. Who knows what else we might catch in this spot, but I'm gonna let this guy go. It's a nice little eater pike. And uh, hopefully we can get some more fish here. I've got my thermosel with me today because if I didn't, the bugs would be absolutely horrendous. I mean, I was pretty much be unfishable right here. There's a fish, I got a bite. Oh, I missed him again. But uh, yeah, the bugs have been unbelievable. So. I put this thing on, turn it on, and they literally do not bother me. I haven't got bit once. I could see clouds of mosquitoes here when I came down here, and they are now nowhere to be seen now. Good tip for river fishing. There he's back. Got him. He 
Another one of my favorite river fish. Ah, the old red horse. These things are so cool. I love the big tall red fins on them. Um, I mean, they're just built for fighting in current and uh, I don't know, I just like red horse. They're just such cool fish. Um, I caught one in the canoe already too in a different spot, but it was a little bigger than this one, but they're all fun, so. There we go. So like I was saying earlier, this is what I love about rivers. You just, I've already got three species and I haven't even moved from where I first started here. I've caught walleyes, I've caught pike, and I've caught red horse. Um, last time I was here I caught smallmouth. And uh, they just stack up so nice in these little holes in the summertime. And uh, a lot of times multiple species in one spot like that and you just need a couple simple tactics to catch them so that's why i love fishing rivers in the in the summer and it's a nice quick easy stop and a good way to fit some fishing in when you don't have a lot of time to launch a boat or get out on a big lake or something like that so uh, good luck fishing guys get hooked up and uh, we'll see you next time